This is the video recording part of my presentation. Um, in addition to a narrated PowerPoint presentation, I've included this to show how to download the source code via the link I included in the presentation. Um, so we'll go through that process right now. Um, you can just click on the link to open it up and it'll uh, launch a web browser window. Um, I'm going to close this just to get it out of the way. Um, the web browser looked like this, uh, showing a couple folders. Um, in order to download the specific folders, the specific folder just have it clicked, uh, checked off, and click the download link right here. Once you do that, it uh, downloads. Mine shows up on the bottom because I'm using Google Chrome. However, if you're using Internet Explorer or Firefox, it may be slightly different. Uh, I'm just going to take the downloaded file and drag it to my desktop. It's a compressed folder so this is why it shows up as this icon here. Um, you'd have to uncompress it to use it, unzip it. So I do so by double clicking, uh, grabbing the folder and just dragging that to the, the desktop. I can now close this and I have the folder here. You can also do so by right clicking and choosing the appropriate selection, in my case extract files. Uh, I won't do that since I already have it extracted. Um, once you have the folder, just double click it and you'll see this window here. Um, to get to the application, you have to go to the, to double click the Windows application, double click bin, double click debug, and then double click the Windows application 3. Um, just uh, a side note, if, you are planning, if you're planning on doing multiple examples or using it multiple times, it might be easier to just copy this, right click copy, and paste it on your desktop or wherever is convenient. This pretty much forms a copy of the application that you can use. You can just double click and, and use it right here. I'll put that on the desktop here, uh, but right now I'll use the application from the folder. So after you, you browse through all those folders, just double click it. It opens up this window here. Um, this is what the application looks like. It has four blank fields, as well as a start button, uh, text representing the W no change value, um, as well as text uh, it's telling the user to enter two points for each class and giving you values that are already assumed, the starting point and the assumed value of D. The graph is blank because nothing has been entered yet and nothing is, no calculations have been done yet. Um, however, when we enter the values and press start, you will see uh, the program start to do start to take place in the work with the calculations. So since we're going through the example, uh, the problem number seven in the midterm, we're going to put in the values that were given. Um, for class one, it was two, one, three, two. Class two, it was three, four, two, three. And then we're going to click start. Uh, once you click start, Notice that the points are graphed, uh, the points that you choose, as well as the line, this green dashed line here is line of separation. Um, it's the line that was calculated based on the values given, and uh, it's graphed using a value of plus 10, negative 10, which is why it scratches across the graph, su such as this. Um, notice the W, no change value on the bottom. The W is correct at 2, as you may recall, that's the value of W that uh, was given before we had to stop completely. The no change value represents the four iterations of no change, uh, which is indication that the program has to stop. Um, if you want to do additional examples, it's important to note that you need to close the application. Um, and just do start it again. If you try doing two applications in the same window, uh, two examples, sometimes, sometimes an error pops up. Um, so you don't want that happening. So I'm going to do another example just to show that it's working with not just, not just the predetermined points, but also any points that you want to enter in. Um, I'll use some arbitrary points. Uh, let's try 0, 0. Let's try 1, uh, 2. Uh, four, five, and 
say five six and now we'll click start um, and the graphs the points as well as line of separation is here in green um, the reason this line goes off the screen is because it's taking points at where the x value is plus 10 and negative 10 in this case um, the y values resulting are very high and very low which is why they go off the screen uh, we're going to do one more example quickly this one is just going to show that the program isn't limited to positive numbers alone since that's all we've been using but it can also handle negative numbers so we'll enter some negative numbers negative uh, five five let's say negative six three um, five negative five um, and we'll just stay with we'll keep we'll stay with five and one and we'll graph that so you can see it graphs the points that you've given per class see by the color coordinated points uh, as well as line of separation um, the line taken at plus 10 negative 10 um, and I also notice the W and the no change value no change value always before uh, W because it's four points and the W value is 42 which is high it's, uh, that's based on the calculations done from the points that you provided um, um, and that's pretty much how the program works it's important to note to provide points that actually can be separated into classes because if you, were, if you give points that cannot be separated it, it, the program will get stuck in an infinite loop and it will result in an error you'd have to close the the, the, um, the window so it's important to not just give random values but uh, values that make sense um, and that's pretty much how the application works um, thanks for watching